Hey people, I've got a question for you. Does win rate actually matter in Pokemon Unite? Now, I know that it's somewhat of a hot topic, especially during the early days of Unite. People saying, oh, if you're a 50% win rate player, you're not worth your salt. You need at least 60% win rate. If you don't have a high win rate, you're trash. But I think what goes into win rate is a little bit more nuanced than that, especially with things like Zacian running around in season 8 or whatever and then the new Mewtwo being just you know completely oppressive within a day boosting people's win rates super high even though they don't deserve it like that or you might just be trying to have fun maybe you just want to play with your friends maybe they're not native to your country and maybe you get a lot of lag and you lose games because of that but you want to play with them because they're your friends and you want to have fun so today we are going to try and get to the bottom of that a little bit. Uh, so I asked my Discord, hey, why or why not? Nope, that's stupid. Why or why doesn't win rate matter? And these are some of the responses that I got. So let's get into it. So our first response is from our boy, Mr. Rover. Is he coming over? I don't know. Let, let's see what he says. Uh, he says, it does matter, but it shouldn't be the only definer of someone and their performance. If someone performs bad, that doesn't mean they're a bad player. It could have been unfortunate matchmaking. The same goes for win rate. If someone is paired with bad players and loses, that isn't their fault, as one person can't be expected to carry an entire team unless they are willing to put resources into their partners and the carry to make sure they are alive unlike many solo queue teammates. Win rate is also a critical part for the developers to determine whether or not someone can cheat their way to masters by trolling or if a new release is broken. The recent post from the Pokemon Unite Japanese Twitter shows that company examined the win rates of the new release and used it to determine the unfairness of the new release Mewtwo X. Win rate should not define someone from the face but should define from their own gameplay. Genuine win rate that scales off of players performance or enemy team composition should be judged now I kind of agree with most everything uh, Rover here is saying in solo queue it, it, it is a nightmare a lot of players are selfish and don't know how to play the game But they sh you should be focusing on your carry and who's gonna win you the game uh, if you if you have a choice between let's say uh, a blue Urshifu and a Pikachu who do you want the resources to go to? Most often times it's going to be the Urshifu, but if the Urshifu is really bad, maybe the Pikachu, but you know, that's, that's here and there. Uh, but yeah, you do want to give the resources to the person who's going to win. But a lot of people don't want to do that because they want to be the main character. They want to be the carry. I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all not built like that. Sometimes you give it to who's going to win you the game. Uh, but Hey, yeah, there's a lot of trolling in solo queue too. So that is a good reason as to why win rate shouldn't matter that much because Unlike other MOBAs, this game has a huge amount of trolls in it, in my opinion. Also, unlike other MOBAs, one person really can't just win the game. Just, just like that, right? In League of Legends, I know if you have a really good, overpowered AD carry, you could probably just start melting people away, destroy uh, the towers, get to the Nexus, destroy it, win. Unfortunately, Pokemon Unite is a different type of MOBA because it relies on, one, a time limit, and two, scoring points. Uh, it's not like other MOBAs where it's just an infinite amount of time until someone gets tired and loses because they can't think right anymore, or if someone just, you know, starts hitting their power spike later on because, you know, their, their team decides to funnel all the gold or whatever into their characters. It's, yeah, Pokemon Unite is a different beast. Next up, we have Kitan44, and they say, win rate does not matter in solo or duo queue. This is a team game, and when you can't have clear communication and good chemistry with your team, it will be very difficult to win. It doesn't matter how good an individual is if the rest of the team doesn't play. How many times has each of us popped off with a great game just to lose? Like 22 KOs with Azu, three out of the four Reggies just for two teammates to die at the two minute mark and insta lose Ray. All of us. You played great, but you get a negative win rate. How is that fair? Then I look at your win rate and judge you as a bad player? No, an individual win rate does mean a thing in a team game. Five stack teams are a different uh, course of gameplay. Assuming you communicate and have a game plan, if your win rate is low, 
maybe the team doesn't mesh well or the game plan is bad. Even then, the win rate doesn't speak for an individual's talent. Honestly, yeah, Ka Kaiten is right. Uh, there are a lot of times where I'm just popping off. I, I get a high uh, KO count. I get pentakills left and right. But then, at the two minute mark, two, three members of my team just decide to full send it, uh, be mispositioned inside the enemy's jungle, and just die. And, and make it a 2v or a 3v5 against the enemy team, and they all have their ultimates up, and we just get obliterated, and then we lose Ray, and then we lose the game. Even though the first eight minutes, we were, we were completely stomping them. There's a lot of hubris in this game. A lot of people start popping off, start feeling themselves, but they don't understand that this is a time-limited game and you have to prepare for this important objective in the middle lane because even if you start winning, there's you can always lose. If you are not up 500 plus points by the time Rayquaza spawns, it's always a losable game. And a lot of people, I guess, just feel invincible because they haven't died all game and they just want to run into danger because they feel like it's not dangerous. No, dummy, it's still dangerous. Fall back, play with your team, and secure the win. Don't try and be the main character. It's it's so crazy. Next on deck, we've got young Danny Phantom. And he says, it doesn't always matter since someone could be really good with a Pokemon, but have a bad team or a team comp that isn't the best for them. Or they go up against an enemy team comp that just counters them. Solo queue also affects this as a support main could be really good at the Pokemon, but due to the nature of solo queue, they may have a negative win rate. A high win rate is either uh, a sweat trying to win with Zacian, Comfey, etc., or the person always queues with someone. Don't at me, okay. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's a good point uh, that I believe he's trying to pull up. There are a lot of people who like one Pokemon and just decide to, you know, one trick that, which is completely fine. Play the game however you want to be played. It's a, it's a game, you're supposed to have fun. But with that being said, you have to understand uh, the advantages and disadvantages of doing that. Uh, one advantage is you're gonna be really cracked at the Pokemon, right? You're, you're gonna be really good at it. You'll probably win you know, a majority of your games. The downsides of that is if your Pokemon gets nerfed or falls out of favor, you yourself have effectively been nerfed. Or if a new Pokemon that comes out that's meta counters your Pokemon and that's the only Pokemon you know how to play, then yeah, your win rate's gonna take a dip. Does this mean you're a bad player? I don't necessarily think so. I think that means that your Pokemon that you're playing is just not a good fit in the meta so far. You yourself should still, you know, be good and have correct decision making. The game just becomes a whole lot more difficult for you because where in the past you could have made several mistakes and still been okay. In this one, if you make one mistake uh, and your Pokemon's not you know, good in the meta right now, it's basically a game over for you. It's a GG, take the L, you know? So now we got Soul, the Thundercat themselves, uh, and they broke they broke this down, you know, piece by piece a little bit. So they ask, does it matter to win the game? Uh, they say, no, skill matters, and so does team coordination. Does it matter for matchmaking? Uh, example, ranked and standard. Unfortunately, absolutely. Tell me why I have to carry a bunch of 40% when they themselves can't even play properly. Not to mention, if all your mons are under uh, slash at 50% and you have like 3,000 games on them, then that just means you're the problem. Constantly getting carried by other members 55% and above, let alone hindering their gameplay and bringing them down with you. Mm. Now, I'm happy Soul brought that up, and while this is a, you know, a discussion on whether or not win rate does or does not matter. Uh, even in the cases of playing in a solo queue game, why is it that if you have like, let's say a 70% win rate and you get queued up with people with 30%, 40%, why is it that the people on the enemy team uh, all have like a 60% win rate? That's not completely fair. Uh, and that just means that the matchmaking could be a lot better because Statistically, with, with uh, that uh, you know, enemy that you're going up against with your allies, most of the time you're probably going to lose, right? Uh, so matchmaking can definitely play a factor in why a lot of people have low rim rates. Think about it like this with me real quick, okay? Uh, let's say you pop off a lot. You have, you, have a, you, have a high, you have a high win rate, right? 
uh, you're a Masters player and you got that high win rate because you were playing against, you know, people who probably didn't deserve to be at your level, so you're just stomping them. That's a good thing for you, right? But on the flip side, what would happen if a newbie who doesn't know how to play the game starts getting matched with people who have a deeper understanding of it and don't need to really learn as much as they do? Obviously, they're going to lose. The Pokemon Unite matchmaking system is that second example. They'll take newbies and put it up against, you know, experienced players and then say, have fun. The newbies don't know how to have fun because they don't know how to play the game yet. And if you are unfortunately stuck on that team with the newbies, your chances of winning get so low that you might as well just take the loss and move on. Moving on, we got good guy Gray. All right. He says, it doesn't matter how good your reasoning sounds. Your win rate doesn't matter. Anyone here can beat anyone legit. There's a difference between playing for fun and playing competitively. We are not out there fighting the best of the best where the world can see ready to judge you for any mistake. And besides Duke, oh, that's me. Uh, we not out here making <laughs> YouTube videos that requires you to push your win rate up and show the world you're good and secure the bag. And until you do one of those things, you and me, just another solo queue player that plays for fun. For me, y'all win rate doesn't matter. If I want to judge someone on gameplay, it will be from what I see, not the statistics. And you know, big boy Gray just dropping it how, how it needs to be dropped, right? Again, going back to what I said in the beginning, some people just want to have fun, man. And having fun, you're going to do crazy things sometimes. Uh, example, when I was playing League of Legends, uh, a lot of my friends moved uh, back to their home countries, right? But we still wanted to, you know, play together. So we all decided to play from our home countries, go onto the American server, and then just queue up. That was a terrible idea, all right? Uh, they're my friends, I love them, they're my boys, but you try playing with people from five different regions and see how that lag is going to affect you. It's not good. The games that we were playing, automatic losses, okay? It was terrible, but it was a good bonding experience, and now it's gonna be a memory that we have and a, and a story that we can tell. It's probably not gonna be you know, an interesting story, but it is a story that you know we can embellish a bit. Because things like that do happen. You just want to have fun with your friends, and sometimes that's not going to look good for you, right? So yeah, with that in mind, sometimes the win rate doesn't matter like that. No one's trying to be the best of the best if you're just trying to play the game and treat it as what it is. A game and not a job, you know? Okay, everybody, now we got Spanish Amsterdam. And they say, I think it depends on what gameplay you're doing. If it's solo queue, it matters since you're trying to get to Masters. If it's duo trio or five stack, it doesn't really matter. For the game itself, all it matters is, of course, the matchmaking itself. All right, Spanish being a little bit contrarian here, uh, especially towards Rover's point. Now, I can kind of see what he was trying to say uh, with, with his statement. However, I do have to put a little bit of pushback here. Uh, I actually think that it's more important in trios and five stacks, uh, reason being, you are the majority of your team. So at that point, you should have more communication than the other two players on your team. Uh, you, you should be able to, uh, you know, set up for objectives. You should be able to set up for ganks. Uh, this, this game is largely about communication if you're, uh, you know, stacking, right? Uh, because if you don't communicate well, your chances of winning go down a lot. Uh, and a good three stack or, or five stack will communicate, you know, tell them, oh, uh, I took your jungle, it'll be up at this time, or I just took the enemy's jungle, it'll be up at this time, or everybody get ready for Reggie, or hey, start coming down, or okay, I'm coming up top, I'm going down bot, uh, get ready for a gank, or, you know, uh, don't play too aggressive, I'm coming in from behind, bait them in. There, there is a lot of setup and a lot of play potential that you can make once you're stacked that you can't necessarily do if you're solo or duo queue, you know? Okay, everybody, now put your hands together for pin kill, uh, because they say, with a small amount of games on a Pokemon or in a season, win rate doesn't matter as the likelihood that you could have gotten really lucky or unlucky is high. However, over many matches, often 100 plus, the luckiness and unluckiness won't play a massive factor, and as a whole, if you're winning above 50%, you are overall playing the game well, and if it's negative, then there could be stuff to improve on. P.S. 
This is for solo, duo, and trio. Five stacks should always be treated differently. And yeah, that's facts. Five stacks should definitely be treated differently because at that point, most of the time, I want to say 98% of the time, you're going up against other five stacks. So if you have a negative win rate as a five stack, you probably got to go back to the drawing board and figure out what's going on. Uh, if you're actually trying to win and not trying to, you know, just have fun, uh, you need to see, hey, what is it that we could be doing differently? Uh, because we're not communicating properly and so we're not winning enough. Uh, however, uh, I will say this, Penkill. You say, however, uh, you know, with 100 plus matches, if you have less than a 50% win rate, the unluckiness and luckiness isn't there. I'm going to say go higher. If you have like a thousand matches on a certain Pokemon or around a thousand matches on a certain Pokemon and you living at a 37% win rate, I want to say at that point, yeah, win rate, win rate does matter uh, because you can't be losing uh, like 63% of your game. I said 37%, right? I think I did. Yeah, you can't be you you can't be losing 63% of your games and be like, yeah, no, it's it's my team. No, buddy. Uh I will say most games are a coin flip. Uh so I'm going to say around 50%, okay? Uh because you know there there are some variables here and there. Uh I think right now uh with all the responses that I'm getting, if you have a 47 48% win rate to a 50% win rate, I'll I'll say you're an average player. Uh or you're doing well. Uh, obviously, uh, there are trolls in this game. There are AFKs in this game. Uh, and while they have gotten it a bit better uh, with you not losing your gems or your performance points or your uh, ELO and Masters, if there's an AFK on your team, they still treat it as a loss. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. Even if you have an AFK and you don't lose anything from losing that game, you still lose win rate, which is a little bit crazy, right? Okay, now let's look to the heavens to see uh, Sky was Astra, uh, what they said. Uh, and they they say, sort of. It depends on the situation. Like, what's the character? What's its playstyle? Where do you play? Etc. Win rate is only there for providing information on how well said player plays. But sometimes, this statement is not 100% true, as there are players who have high win rates but have low macro and micro. It's very situational. When talking about win rates, as you need to be specific with it as you can fake high win rates with bot games. Though, if a player at least has 50% win rate with mostly true matches, example, a thousand games, it can assure that said player has a skill above average. It proves that said player actually tries fighting against the odds to win and not throw. Conclusion. It's a low key yes that win rate matters. And you guys, I, I forgot that was an actual thing that was happening. Yeah, back in the day, bot matches were very prevalent in the game. Uh, I know a lot of people would just seek them out uh, to potentially raise their overall win rate, which is kind of scummy, right? Uh, because you're, you're saying that, yeah, uh, this is how good I am. When in reality, you, you have a, you know, 30 2% win rate even though your thing is saying 70%. I don't know. But yeah, bot lanes were a huge deal uh, for overall win rate. But I think that's why nowadays uh, mainly the player base only looks at your current season win rate, right? Not the overall win rate, which I think is a better determination of your skill. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll put in this as well. Yeah, people grow as players, right? So yeah, you should be looking at the current matchmaking skill to see, you know, how good they are now. Uh, obviously, if you started the game as a newbie in season one and you had like a super low win rate, and right now in season, what are we in, 12 or something like that, you have a higher win rate, obviously you got better. You put the time in to learn the game, okay? So that means you're a good player. Not everyone is going to stay at their lowly 10% win rate. People will grow and evolve like Pokemon, right? Let's get it. Last up, we've got the boy Feathers. And he says, win rate doesn't mean a damn thing. Really, it's just a personal goal for the player themselves. It doesn't determine if they're good or bad at the game. Like, for example, my Zorark's win rate is below 50%, but it doesn't mean I'm bad with it. I just have bad teammates and terrible matchmaking. Yes, I'll have bad games with Zorak, but that's normal. Bad games are going to happen, but you can't always blame yourself for it. Remember, you control one player, not five. So if you lose games and you know it's not your fault, why would your win rate matter? You're still probably a good player. To me, it doesn't matter. And I gotta say, yeah, actual facts. You only control one player, not five. And 
for this example that I'm about to use, I'll, I'll use his Zoroark since he just brought it up. Unlike matchmaking, uh, you can't check current season win rate for the Pokemon that you play, right? And Zoroark itself is one of the harder Pokemon to play in Pokemon Unite. Uh, there's a little bit more of a learning curve than something like Pikachu, uh, to say. So, example, Zora just came out, okay? You keep on playing it, you keep on losing the games. Let's say you play 100 games, you, you lost every single last one of them because you didn't understand the character. But on game 101, something finally clicks and you start popping off. And you win the next 30 games in a row as the Pokemon, right? That's good for you because you actually understand the Pokemon, you're unstoppable with it now. However, you're still gonna have a low win rate because even though you got on that 30 game win streak, you still had 100 lost games before there because you were trying to learn the character. So you gotta ask yourself, does that mean that you're a bad player if your Pokemon's win rate is low or did it just take more time for you to understand it? So that was everybody in my Discord's opinions on win rate mattering, yes, no, maybe so. Uh, so let's let's get to me. Do I think win rate matters? Uh, I think it matters to a point. Again, uh, I've said this. This is probably my third time saying this in the video. If you're, I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt now too. If you're below a 47% win rate, you're probably bad at the game. Uh, there are many trolls. There are many AFKs. Hell, there there are a bunch of Pokemon that will just magically inflate your win rate because they're overpowered. Mewtwo! <laughs> I'm sorry, something caught in my throat. But even with all these problems in the game, there are ways for you to capitalize on victory and win if you know correct positioning, if you know uh, what counters which Pokemon, if you do your research and you actually want to learn how to win the game. There, there are ways to shift winning into your favor even if you're losing a game very badly. There are things that you can do, such as farming, which a lot of solo queue players don't do. If you're behind the game, uh, just start farming what's on your side of the map to try and start reaching your power spikes. If you know that you're a support, don't try and take jungle buffs and and uh, Audinos and stuff like that. Leave it, leave it to your jungler, leave it to your attacker, leave it to someone who's going to actually carry the game. Know your role. A lot of players do not know their role or what to do or what their job is. They, they, they get their responsibilities mixed up. You're not going to be a blissy uh, going into a team fight and KOing three people by yourself. It's not going to happen. Maybe if you're something like Blue Urshifu, yeah, that, yeah, that you, you could probably manage that. But no, you need to know the strengths of your Pokemon. You need to know the weaknesses of your Pokemon. And you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of the enemy's Pokemon. Sure, there are going to be times where your comp will get countered by the enemy comp. It happens. It's natural. That's why it's going to be around 50% that you're going to start winning. All right. That, that, that's just, that's, that's a coin flip. That's what's going to happen. But on the flip side as well, uh, a lot of players lose games uh, and may be judged as bad players because they want to play what their favorites are. Let's say for, for instance, you have a, an attacker on your team, a two all rounders and a speedster, right? What is the team missing? probably a support. Do you know how many people in this player base will actually bite the bullet and be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go the Eldegoss for you, or oh yeah, I'll play Cafable. Uh, Cafable. Next to zero, that, that last person, most of the time, will pick another attacker. That's how crazy the player base is right now. That's why I don't think win rate should be brought up too much, because people just want to play the game and have fun, man. Uh, now, all you pro players out there though, if we see your win rate lacking a little bit, if we see that it's below 50%, or if you wanna become a solo queue god and you're you're below a 50% win rate, you're actually not playing the game right. That's my two cents. Thank you everybody for giving me your, your perspectives, your input on this, and to the viewers who made it this far into the video, what do y'all think about win rate? Does it matter? Does it not? Let us know below. All right, people, see ya.